felt like an outcast and and humiliated and um, just a screw up, honestly. When I was um, a freshman in college, I was I was dating a girl, um, and I lived with a few friends, so rules were kind of out the window. You know, I was going to Mid America into my sophomore year in September, actually. Um, my, my girlfriend at the time told me uh, she was pregnant uh, and I remember that day very, very vividly. I, I fell onto my bed and just stared out the window for probably three hours. Um, and I just remember feeling like the bottom dropped out of me, like not knowing what to do. A overwhelming sense of fear and, and, and mystery for what my life was going to be for the remainder of my life because I'd seen so many people in my family go through the very same scenario. I wanted to break that mold uh, and I and I dreamed of doing that and at that point in my life I realized that that wasn't going to happen. I would have given myself the name of outcast. Definitely. Um, just another number at that point. No, nothing outside of the normal. In that time I, I I was afraid to talk to my parents about it. What I had grown up seeing in my life in the church, I felt like I was going to be judged pretty pretty harshly for what I had done. I was angry towards people that I didn't know. Like I was angry at a lot of people at Mid-America that didn't deserve it because I was afraid of how they may judge me. Well, when Carson was born, um, a lot of things changed for me, obviously. I, I was the father of a beautiful baby boy that I was extremely happy to be the father of. But Carson was uh, six months old, probably, um, and I was actually at a party um, at one of my friend's house. We were sitting around, there was a ton of people there. Uh, we were all drinking, and I remember going out and sitting by the bonfire outside. So I sat there. And I, and I had like this weird angle. I could see up at the porch. I could see all the people and I could see how they were acting and what they were doing. And I just remember having the question, there's got to be more to life than this. This is not what I have to look forward to. But I didn't know, I didn't know what that was. I drove home right after that. And I told my friends like, I'm, I'm out of here. And I was never the person to leave anything early. I had this Bible. It's, it's a blue Bible, it's got a red stripe on, on the middle of it, and it sat on my end table at home on my couch. And I remember um, going into my apartment, pitch black, and, and I, opened the, I opened the Bible to Romans 8, 38 through 39. And I remember reaching out right then and there and saying like, how damaged I feel right now and how shameful I feel right now. None of that is going to push God away enough for him not to turn back around and love me. I, I was going in one direction and I had to stop and turn. And God was there. He was there for me, fully, without question. And I was able to put words to that and put um, true feelings to that because I had Carson and I had that tangible, you know, being that I loved very similarly. I met, I met someone named Katie, Katie Rose, and then we just started talking and, and things developed and I brought into the story my son. The first thing I saw, you know, was her reaction to how somebody like me in that time had screwed up and how she loved my son and, and cared about him. Katie was the dean's daughter at the time and Ron was the head of student government and I was like, oh wow, I found out who he was and I found out who their family was and I was like, okay, as soon as they catch wind of me talking to their daughter uh, and, and, and attempting to date their daughter, they're going to know that I have a kid and they're going to just say, you need to, you need to cut this out. Uh, one day I remember vividly uh, going over to their house and being deathly afraid of how um, they would treat uh, me but not only me but my son and I was I was I was prepared to be angry I was prepared to leave I've said I've said this before and I've told other people this but I I've never experienced the love of God in a more tangible way 
because of how they treated me and my son. And that gave me a new understanding, or the, just the, the tip of the iceberg into what it is to be Christian. And what it is to love, be, truly love people. And it wrecked me for the better. <sighs> the name of shame in, in that time of my life was outcast. And the name of truth and freedom now is, is a child of God.